Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, and we are going to be honoring the heroes and the victims of 9-11 by talking about different programs that are available to first responders, firefighters, policemen, policemen, veterans. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing in on different mortgage programs a lot of you probably don't know about that uh, have you know requirements for much less down and maybe have some uh, lower credit requirements, things like that. Now, these programs are for any uh, you know firefighter or whatnot. It's not just available for those that uh, were a part of 9-11. But at the end of the day, this is our way of recognizing this really historic day in uh, American, if not global, history. So in that in mo- with that in mind, Julie Harris. Yes, that's right. And we all know that tragic event of 9-11 happened more than two decades ago, and we can't do anything to go back. But what we can do is honor those first responders. So this podcast is our way of doing just that by educating you, our listeners, real estate professionals, about how to help those who helped others and are still being of service every day. We all owe a debt of gratitude to those who have our backs in times of need. So one of the best ways to help is to be of service yourself as a professional real estate advisor. Listen to all of these really great mortgage programs. Most agents and buyers don't know about any of these. These are for first responders and consider doing any or all of the following. And there there are more out there than just what we're going to discuss, but I chose some of the top ones. Yeah, it's worth noting, we're not going to get through all these notes today on the podcast because there's a lot of details with links and all of that. So we've made this easy for you. Just scroll down in the show description, the show notes. There's obviously all of our notes from today. And we are going to use our notes as closely as we can so that you guys have reference points because we know a lot of you are going to use this for training um, your own agents and your teams and your brokerage. And this information is also fantastic to use in social media. Maybe you want to create some short videos around these different programs. Uh, I have to say it is kind of surprising and unfortunate that so many loan officers and frankly so many of you don't know about these different programs. Give yourself a competitive advantage in the marketplace and really learn as much as you can about all the different mortgage products out there. Uh, I realize that everyone kind of bemoans the fact that there's not a lot of homes for sale. Well, that's going to start curing itself over the next 18 mm-hmm. to 24 months. And in the interim, you better know how to help all the different folks out there that are going to be looking to purchase a home. Because the next, and you already see this happening, uh, people are starting to say, well, how am I ever going to buy a house? Houses are mm-hmm. so expensive. I can't come up with a down payment. That's really the focus and obviously, you know, gearing it towards um, honoring the fallen victims of 9-11. So, Yes. Uh, drill down, and if you're thinking that, oh my gosh, there's going to be a lot that Tim and Julie are about to tell me, you're correct, but don't <laughs> worry, the notes are in the show uh, in the show description below. And while you're there, of course, join Premier Coaching. The link to join Premier Coaching is below, and you do get uh, full access to the entire first level of Premier Coaching. In addition to that, you do get a daily semi-private coaching call with one of our Harris-certified coaches. So all of you should be joining Premier Coaching. It costs you nothing. It takes 17 seconds to join. You're looking for the next natural step in your real estate business. I just gave it to you. So scroll down and click to join Premier Coaching. All right. So as always, our job is to educate you, motivate you, and get you into action. So today we're going to lead with five quick ways that you can indeed take action on what we're about to educate you on, these different first responder programs. I'm going to go through these quickly. So there's five ways you can do something about this. Way number one, make a video about some of the special programs we're going to expose you to on today's podcast. Send it to your database, post it on your social media, and submit a press release to your local media sources. Press releases don't cost you anything. It is, you know, you, you, that's a funny thing you just brought that up because it is fascinating how infrequently you hear about any of the local, even the very, you know, the, the community newspapers talking mm-hmm. about these types of programs. That wasn't the way it was like 15, 20 years ago. Well, why is that? It's because of the advent of the three to three and a half percent mortgage on the 30 year fixed, which was the standard issue program for practically a decade, it seems like. But, you know, people didn't really need to know so much about this stuff when the, the standard 30 year fixed was pretty good. That's right. And if you're a loan officer, as many of you are also, you know, doing mortgages, it would be a really smart idea for you to make this your niche, having a real master level 
level of knowledge of all these different types of products. That's right. So you, loan officers as well, could make a video, should make a video about some of these programs. Then uh, the second thing, take the information from today's podcast and do a Facebook Live session or a series of Facebook Live sessions inviting your friends and followers to learn more about these loan programs. You can split the programs up and even do a weekly series. Way number three, you can do something about this. Work with a lender who specializes in first responder types of loans, FHA, VA, HUD programs, and interview them for a video, a Facebook live session, or some of, especially my elite clients, have their own podcasts. You can certainly do it there. The fourth thing you could do is submit an article to your online and offline news publications about these available programs. And much of what you could put in your article, you can find in today's podcast notes. We've done some of the work for you. And the fifth thing you can do is to create a first responder seminar or webinar in person or online. Present at a firehouse or several or police station or stations and see how many people you can help once they know about the special programs they probably qualify for. Bring your first responder program lender specialist with you to help answer questions. And it's, it's important to note here uh, that though we are focused on first responders in honor of 9-11, there are also similar programs available in many uh, cities for yes. teachers. That's right. We're going to talk about some of that stuff. Yes. And, all, and uh, the uh, another good, if you're selling in rural a rural area, the uh, FDA has a lot of interesting mortgage products out mm -hmm. there. A lot of create, creative stuff that a lot of you don't know about, Tons but you should be learning. That's right. And I'm, I'll bring some of that to future series because this <laughs> stuff is all coming out of the woodwork now. Okay. Now, in all cases, close the video, article, or session with a call to action. For more information about these and other special programs, call or text today at your phone number. So let's take a look at some of the available programs to help those special first responders. You all know people who can benefit from these programs. What a great way of, to be of service yourself. It gives you a lot of things to talk about. We're going to talk about FHA mortgages first. The FHA provides easy to qualify government insured loans. These loans have lower down payment requirements and are more forgiving with their credit requirements. For example, first responders who qualify for this plan may be able to place a minimum down payment as low as three and a half percent. I have seen lenders some, uh, advertising some matching programs as well. So it, sometimes they can do a conventional five percent where they get down payment assistance for half of it if they come up with the other half. And a lot of times, I, if correct me if, you're, uh, if I'm wrong, but isn't the maximum mortgage amount for a lot of these programs now a million dollars? Yes, in some depending markets? on your state. And you can look that up on the HUD.gov website. So it's kind of insane to think that someone can get an FHA mortgage for a million dollars. I know. Well, with, how with many people know that, right? With 35 grand down. I know. Yes, it is amazing. So uh, typical requirements for FHA would be two years of stable employment, ideally at the same job, fewer than two 30-day late payments over the past two years, 30% of the buyer's gross income should be available to use towards their mortgage payments, and monthly debt payments cannot be more than 43% of their income. Those are pretty standard issue, but look how unusual that is that it's only two years of employment. Some lenders require more. Uh, they are okay with uh, fewer than two 30-day late payments over the past two years. So that's a little bit more lenient. Now, of course, and I have to throw this out there because, you know, we other restrictions and overlays may apply depending on the lender. Loan requirements are fluid, and we, like you, are disclosing that we are not mortgage lenders. Ask your professional loan originator for the details and refer your clients to somebody who actually specializes in these programs, not that just says, yeah, I can look that up. Somebody who's actually good at this. Well, so along those lines, when Julie and I were selling real estate, we had three different lenders that we worked with, it, you know, despite the fact that all three of them just wanted to be our only lender, you know, but we had one that specialized. We mentioned Mark's name so many times in this podcast. It's funny. He always thanks us when we do it. Yep. Though they're still in business, but Yerke Mortgage in Columbus, Ohio, they were without a doubt the best. Well, I'm sure there were other ones that were great, but they're the ones that we used on they a routine our basis. They were our favorite for the lower end, you know, government type borrower. Because why? Mark Yerke was really patient and really nice and really easy to work with uh, for the buyers. The buyers loved to work with him. He was very comfortable working with them. Now, we had, so that was where we sent all the like first time buyers or, you know, these types of buyer, borrowers to uh, Mark. Then we had a Midland type bar uh, lender. And that was the guy that was going to work with, say, somebody who was, 
maybe selling their first house, moving up to something else. Mark could certainly have done those loans too, and oftentimes we'd send those to Mark as well. But we did have another uh, lender for that one as well. And this was primarily a countrywide lender back when Countrywide was in business. That's right. Yep. And then the upper end lender, that was someone who specialized in jumbo mortgages. He was doing something called portfolio lending. For example, here in Puerto Rico, get this, guys. You can go to a bank that's really the only bank here called Banco de Popular, and they will give you, are you ready for this, a th- uh, up to a $10 million mortgage. Uh, I don't know what the down payment was. I think it was 30%. I think it's 30, yeah. But a mortgage amount. So you buy something for 13, you put down three, you can have a $10 million mortgage at 6.35%. That's no government loan. No, that, that's <laughs> a portfolio for sure. That's a portfolio yeah. loan. So you're going to have to like, so portfolio lenders, and we sent, I don't Jeff, Jeff Singleton. Mm-hmm. So we'd send mm-hmm. Jeff, <laughs> yeah, it's funny, I remember that. Mm-hmm. We'd send Jeff our very upper end loans because he had a lot of portfolio lenders and portfolio lenders are great for guess who? Self-employed people. They're uh, for anybody that has received income from other sources, uh, maybe investment income, things like that. Things that are un- uh, not traditional or certainly things that were above the nor- normal lending limits that the banks would allow for in our market. So you're going to maybe consider having three different lenders you're working with because here is the problem and here's how we figured this out the hard way. We would get a first-time borrower who would have been perfect for an FHA loan and we sent him to the wrong lender and the lender didn't have, wasn't licensed. I don't know if that's the right term, Mm -hmm. but wasn't licensed to actually do FHA loans. And so what that lender didn't, the lender knew maybe that there was an FHA loan out there that would have been perfect for that borrower, but because they couldn't sell it to that uh, borrower, they would put that borrower into another program that wasn't the best fit for them, the borrower, but it was the best fit for them, the lender. And I know this is what I'm about to say is going to get lenders mad at me, but you guys know it's true. This What this happens as well. Sometimes lenders will put borrowers with the loan programs that pay them the most commission on the back of the loan. So all these reasons that you always want to have multiple loan sources, that and I, I don't know if it's, you know, the law or anything like that, but I think it's more ethical uh, to have a different sure. lend, uh, you know, different referrals for different lenders. Well, you should be able to shop them anyway, you know. Exactly. Your borrower certainly should. Okay. Yeah. So next we have the Good Neighbor Next Door program. It's actually called that. It is a mortgage program by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, otherwise known as HUD. They do have a website. Some of you have never been to it, but you should, (laughs) which is offered to public servants such as first responders. The program allows qualified applicants to purchase homes in revitalized communities. Now, some of you, when I say revitalized community, you're thinking that it's only the ghetto. Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's just an up-and-coming zip code that maybe has a whole bunch of parking lots that need to be developed. Well, it could be many different things. Julie, right outside of downtown Austin, where you and I Opportunity are, zones, you're uh, thinking, yeah. Right outside of uh, downtown Austin, where yeah. you and I are doing, uh, we're limited partners in a couple of developments. Those are essentially what would have been considered these types of uh, mm-hmm. communities that you're talking about. That's right. And Re- so, revitalization. And, and that's, so there's a lot of development that's happening in these revitalization areas because the developers get preferential lending treatment when they go to borrow the money to do the development. So don't just make this assumption in your head that it's going to be areas where you're not going to have borrowers uh, you know, or want to have yeah. future listings because that's not correct. That's right. Now, the Good Neighbor Next Door program allows someone who qualifies to purchase a home for 50% of the appraised value based on where the house is located. The HUD uh, provides a listing of properties that you may check out and find which houses and locations are available. Go to HUD.gov for lots of details on this and tons of other great programs. They're a little-known resource for many realtors. You can be the one who's in the know. I actually uh, was on their site as I was writing this podcast because I thought, well, okay, so we all think of the MLS to find property, right? Hmm. And you type it in, and of course, we're going to hear the same thing. There's not enough inventory. Well, did you know that HUD has basically their own MLS across the country? You just use the zip code or the name of the town, and you can look up what's available. And, but these would be HUD-owned properties? Some of them are Fannie Mae, some of them are Freddie Mac, some of them are HUD. Um, some of them are actually from Homeland Security. There are, um, there's like 10 different categories. So what we're saying is either properties that are in essence owned by the government that mm-hmm. were in like the sake of Homeland Security, we can only assume that they were taken from... Uh, For whatever reason. From onerous yeah. folks. In yep. any event, so make sure you go to that. The link is down below, so make sure you just scroll down and look at that link. And that is a great way to find additional homes for sale. Yes, and especially think about investors who are looking for less expensive stuff in, say, a revitalization zone. That could be a good play for them. Well, did you, uh, were these being listed by normal brokerages, normal real estate Sometimes. Uh, the actual uh, web address, and think about, again, investors, first-time buyers, first responders. 
um, you can go to hudhomestore.gov. Well, again, the link is down below. But all, like, for example, this is going back to one of our uh, podcasts that we dust off about once a quarter, how to find homes that aren't in the MLS. Yep. There's a new source that you're going to add clearly to your list. I'm going to make an extensive list <laughs> exactly. because it, the list is growing. Okay, so to qualify, the buyer must comply with uh, the HUD program regulations and meet the first responder requirements. So they must be, here are the requirements, employed, for example, as a full-time firefighter or an uh, emergency, an EMT, a paramedic, or a law enforcement officer, or by a fire department, an EMS unit or a law enforcement agency, a unit of general local government, or even an Indian tribal government. They must be serving in the locality where the home is located for this program. Think of how much value you would bring when you present these programs locally to firehouses and police stations. I mean, I'm sure that they don't know that that kind of thing is out there. You know, it's also kind of fascinating, too. I was hearing a report that it's, uh, in some cities they're having a really difficult time finding people to be cops. Yeah. You know, that would be an interesting incentive if, you know, you know of anybody that's trying to hire police officers to the local police force, maybe remind those recruiters that, uh, guess what, you can get preferential lending yeah. if you're a police officer in our town. So Yes, something and consider. they could refer all of that business to you, the agent that uh, enlightened them with that fact, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about VA? Well, many first responders have military experience. The service record may qualify for a VA loan. Uh, VA loans are not well understood by many realtors. When you really know the benefits, you'll be more of an advocate for those loans, both for your buyer sides as well as when you're a listing agent, considering accepting a VA loan. It drives me nuts when I hear, oh, I rejected it because it was a VA loan. Well, VA loans have no down payment requirement, that's true. Additionally, qualified buyers do not need to pay for mortgage insurance, uh, unlike with FHA. These features make VA loans one of the most attractive loan programs available in the industry to people who qualify. Now, did you know that in addition to first responders with previous military service, VA loans are also available for active duty service members, qualified spouses, and other veterans? So your buyers can apply for a VA loan if they or their spouse served 181 days during peacetime or 90 consecutive days in wartime. They or their spouse served for six years with the National Guard or Reserves. That counts as well. And other great things about VA loans, no prepayment penalties. Sellers can contribute to closing costs. Refinancing can happen actually up to 100% of the home's value and repayment workouts if the veteran has any payment issues. Now, I think, and I'm, I'm not positive about this, maybe you've researched this, mm -hmm. that if, for example, your father, like my father is in the military. Mm -hmm. Now, I know he could use those VA benefits, which he never did before he passed away, mm -hmm. right? But he could have used those VA benefits. I think they're transferable. I think they're transferable too. Yeah. You So go to the VA website for more details. There are some stipulations, but I have to point this out because I heard a lot of discussion, both good and bad, about both FA. FHA and VA. So when the world was full of competitive, conventional, and all cash loans, and yes, there are some places where that's still happening. Of course, you know, you might say, well, I'm going to take that as certainly all cash over somebody that has maybe no down payment, and they're using a, a loan that has uh, less strict credit requirements. Well, here's the thing. Just because somebody's doing FHA or VA or uh, the neighbor next door program, does not automatically equal that they are a risky buyer. That doesn't mean that. They may have an 800 credit score and they just want a more advantageous loan program. So this is where you would want to ask a lot more questions. And Julie, and, yeah. Julie said something earlier too about lender overlays. So we need to really drill down on what that is. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to your FHA, let's say you're going to your local Wells Fargo bank, right? Sure. And Wells Fargo, let's say they're off, they have as one of the many mortgages, one of them is an FHA mortgage. But you've been to FHA's website and you know the requirement for someone to get an FHA mortgage are these four things, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you go to Wells Fargo's website, it's these four things plus, plus, plus plus those plus plus pluses are the overlays so the servicers and they're it's legal for them to do this can actually raise the requirements for someone to get an, an fha mortgage that's the reason yeah. it's really important that you're working with lenders that specialize in that type of product because it's maybe a, a fair assumption to assume that maybe wells fargo is trying to make the fha loans a little bit less interesting versus say something else that they're also offering true so again do your homework on these types of things why as a real estate professional do you want to know this stuff i'll give you the number one reason to pe protect your borrowers that's why yeah. to protect your borrowers so that you know they're using the best loan available to them but also on the listing side of things to protect your sellers 
to make sure that when they're, you, you might get an offer in on somebody's, um, you know, that's a VA loan. And maybe that seller's got some sort of, you know, preconceived notion about VA loans. But because you know VA loans are fantastic and it's not just because the person couldn't get a mortgage someplace else. It's because the mortgage that they're getting through the VA now, it's a hell of a lot better than the mortgage. Yeah. The interest rates are lower. Well, and some of this actually has some regional flavor to it as well. In fact, in places like Texas, some of the sellers actually prefer veteran loans they because do. they themselves are veterans and it's very, very veteran friendly there. So some of that's regional. And these lender overlays that you talk about are actually pretty fluid as well. They do change all the time. So an example of that was during COVID, there were a lot of lender overlays where it said, if your job, you know, you're qualifying for a mortgage and you say your job is in say hospitality, which was shut down by and large for 18 to 24 months. Well, they decided, their risk managers decided that you were probably high risk. So that doesn't mean that you didn't get approved, but they might have added a lender overlay that said, we now require your letter of employment to state that you will indeed have a job after the lockdowns are over. Well, but taking this to an extreme since you brought that up, sure. I, I, I remember very clearly in 07, prim uh, primarily in 07 and a little bit in 08, that people in the real estate industry had virtually an impossible time. They got the kibosh. It got the kibosh from yep. all the major lenders for getting any kind of mortgage loan. And, and that was loan officers, real estate agents, um, some investors, appraisers. appraisers. Yep. We were all in the same bucket. And that they, they would also reduce your available line of credit. So, you know, you'd have a $100,000 available line of credit. And let's say you only owed $10,000 on it or $1,000. Well, guess what your now available line of credit was? Whatever your outstanding loan balance was. These are all the types of things that lenders are doing or they're not doing now, but they did before. And Julie and I are very much on the lookout for any of this type of mm -hmm. behavior because those are the very early warning signs. We saw the lenders starting to do these types of, uh, you know, I would say restructuring of people's home equity loans as an example in the real estate industry. We saw that in late, it was, let me, I can even remember. And I think it was 07. May. Yeah, it was 07. Yeah. It was probably June or July of mm -hmm. 2007. It's an early warning sign. And this was way before people knew the real estate market was going to correct. Wait, if Julie and I started our short sale coaching program, um, and this was back in uh, May, June of 2007. We were the first, uh, you know, coaching and training organization in the nation. And there was quite a few others that, you know, replicated us afterwards, but to offer coaching and training for real estate agents. Why did we do that? Because we knew the market was changing because why <laughs> we had coaching clients all over the country and Julie and I were having to teach them how to do short sales because when we sold real estate, we had to do short sales. Now, that kind of brings us uh, full circle. Uh, there is no reason to believe that there's going to be any sort of real estate crash. We talk about this frequently because we have to counterbalance all the misinformation that's out there yeah. about the real estate markets. That, that's We get that question constantly. Well, I have a new twist on that, as a matter of fact. I bet this you do. Be my, maybe my last thought for this podcast, and we'll move on to some other things for the next ones. Okay, so... To that point, now, why do we tell you stories about, you know, lender lo overlays during the housing crash as an example to what lenders can do and do sometimes? And some of you guys think that that's illegal and you go posting all over the internet. It's not illegal. They can do it if they feel like it. They're the ones lending. Right? Well, they're doing it to protect themselves. Yes. It's a risk management thing. They don't want to have that much, you know, at risk. So they put bigger rules on it. Because if a lender does an FHA mortgage and that FHA mortgage goes bad, that lender, the FHA can push that, un that mortgage back to the servicer. Mm -hmm. So if Wells Fargo originates a loan and that loan goes bad and the, let's say the FHA said, well, you didn't check all the boxes or collect all the forms or do everything exactly right. Wells Fargo, you got to take these loans back. That is kind of a lot of, uh, that, that creates a, ma a, a potentially massive problem. So what the lenders do is they essentially put safeguards in place to make yeah. it so they can uh, allow themselves a little bit more uh, selectivity when choosing who they're going to lend to. That's absolutely correct. So let's see. Oh, yes. The po podcast I listened to this morning, Housing Wire, they were talking about um, there's all this discussion, and, and this is all true, that, that uh, credit is being, um, you know, affected by inflation, right? So people's payments are going up. Maybe they're financing their groceries using their visa where they used to pay cash, all of these things. There are defaults on car loans, stuff like that, right? Consumer credit is under some pressure right now. So one might postulate, if you didn't study this type of thing, that, well, that must mean that sooner or later the housing market's going to crash. And yet, what has the most resilience through this entire inflationary cycle? It's amazing to think about, okay? And I'm going to talk about this on a future podcast on Friday as well. Okay, so did you know that 30, 60, and 90-day lates on mortgage payments are at an all-time low? 
Well, I did know that because yeah. I listened to the same podcast with Logan yes. this morning. Yes. As okay. You. <laughs> well, so that's crazy, right? So you would think, so what does that tell you? Well, maybe you are having some struggle with, you know, paying a hundred dollars more a week in your grocery bill, but you're sure as heck not going to risk your three and a half percent mortgage. Are you? No, well, well, you're remember, not going to blow that. Was a, we'll have to confirm this. Please do yeah. this for Friday. I think yeah. 43%, 43.6% of all mortgages are paid off and the other roughly 50% have mortgages that are less on average than like three and a half percent. Yeah, 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 exactly. So basically you're dealing with half of America has no mortgage and the other half that has a mortgage has a super low interest rate. With epic equity. With Yeah, exactly. And if they've owned the house for even two years, let alone more, they have maybe 40, maybe 50% equity in their properties. No housing crash on the horizon. (laughs) No, that's right. And in, in addition to that, um, we have the highest credit scores in history right now. And we also have, you, you mentioned equity. What was the other thing? There's another one that I think is on the Friday podcast. But Let's, let's, keep, let's we'll, keep them we'll in keep suspense that. for Friday. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so today's podcast has been in honor of our service members and first responders. Don't just learn about these things. Get out there and present a seminar, a Facebook live session, videos, press releases, social media. Add the links to your website. Don't forget to share your success stories with us. We'd love to feature you with a shout out on our next podcast. That's right. So guys, uh, do please recognize that 9-11 is a historic date, that there were a lot of people that gave their lives. It was uh, like almost 3,000 people that died as a result of the attack in New York City. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I realized the it, you know an interesting statistic, 39, what was it? Uh, the average, only 7% of all real estate agents are 39 years or younger, and a vast majority of real estate agents are, it was something like um, over 50%, maybe it was 60% of all agents are 60 years old or mm-hmm. something like that. Well, so, most, so most of you remember this, but for the rest of you that don't, do yourself a favor and do go back and research it because it was something that really changed, well, you know, it changed everything, and it still does. In the meantime, to, please do honor first responders. And uh, do learn these programs because you're going to help somebody build equity into their future. And frankly, you're going to be more in alignment with your highest, truest purpose, which is being of service to other people. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.